What's up, everybody? It's Kevin here from Happy Beard Games, and this is Star Trek The SNES Generation, a series of three separate reviews on Star Trek games for the Super Nintendo. The games we're reviewing are Star Trek The Next Generation Futures Past. There's the cart. We also got Deep Space Nine Crossroads of Time. And for today's review, the first one is Star Trek Starfleet Academy Starship Bridge Simulator for the Super Nintendo. Let's check this game out and all these games out in the near future on Happy Bird Games' Star Trek the SNES Generation. Video Games, The Final Frontier. These are the reviews of Happy Beard Games, his continuing mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new games, new consoles, to boldly go where no one has gone before. Star Trek Starfleet Academy for the Super Nintendo with the subtitle Starship Bridge Simulator puts players in the Star Trek role of their Trekkie dreams as a new cadet of the Starfleet Academy on Earth's headquarters in San Francisco. The game is light on story and more of a ship simulator where you're not only in control of a Star Trek ship of your choice but also go on various missions, battle enemy ships, and not just shooting but full control of various parts of the ship such as shields, tractor beams, red alerts, and warp engines. The story is a simple one, but it allows you room to create a character and pretend that you are actually there. The intro cutscene tells of a new cadet traveling to Earth to Starfleet Academy. The reason? To explore the galaxy, or perhaps to fulfill his father's wishes, who was in Starfleet and killed by Klingons in a space attack. Players can choose to be male or female, and there are no stats changed on this or any of the other options. Strangely, you can choose a preset first and last name combination, but not type your own name. The game begins immediately with an area select screen based in Starfleet Headquarters. You have a few options to go to freely. Going through the map in order, the first area is the classroom where you can read lectures from your instructor. The lectures provide hints and clues about what to do in situations in ship combat and features and actions of the ships. This section is helpful, but optional. There is no direct story in this game. The second section is a combat simulator training. This is where the game really begins. To start, you go to the basic training exercise. You are supposed to be on a virtual mission on a mock starship here, similarly to the scenes in the movie The Wrath of Khan. The game screen here is the layout of a Federation ship such as the USS Enterprise. This basic training helps you become familiar with the game as it's not your fast-paced shoot-em-up like Star Fox is, but a slower-paced game with some tactics and ship control. It does not begin with combat. Instead, you learn how to control ship speed and travel to four different buoys. You can use the ship's radar to see where the buoys are located and you can see where the ship is going out the view screen, which is a smaller than most games first-person perspective but you also get a nice view of the interior of the ship's bridge and its crew, which really add to the game to make it appear like a Star Trek show would. The gameplay makes use of the Super Nintendo's Super Effects chip, used in other games like Star Fox for a 3D effect on Super Nintendo games with it built into the game cart, no adapters or accessories required. It's worth noting how good the game looks for its time with the 3D graphics. You know for a Super Nintendo game, this game sure has a little references to Genesis. What is Genesis? GIVE ME GENESIS! Actually, there was a version of the game released for the Sega Genesis, but you need the 32X adapter. The next portion of basic training, you have to use the ship's tractor beam to carry a buoy to a space station starbase. It's nice to use a non-combat ship feature, and it's also nice to be able to move around freely in a 3D setting on a Super Nintendo game. This was very rare graphically, on this console. It's also interesting that all ships are gray and red in color, perhaps another graphical limitation of the Super FX chip and the Super Nintendo. When you deliver the buoy, you hail the station which instructs you toward your next destination. Warping to that, you are now entering ship combat. You have to switch to red alert mode from the ship's menu. 
You can also check tactical info on your enemies. This training mission teaches you how to attack with both weapon types and how to avoid enemies. And while the graphics are neat looking, they do take a bit of getting used to. The Super Nintendo controller only has a D-pad, but thankfully the combat speed is slow paced, though it can still be very tough in certain later missions. The graphics seem to affect the gameplay, making it sluggish, but it's still a fun experience to play once you get used to the speed and pacing of the game. This is one game where the advanced 3D graphics definitely do affect the gameplay. Your ship can fire torpedoes for a bomb weapon, and also fire phasers for a laser-like attack. You can also change the rate of speed forward or reverse, and rotate the ship in any direction in 3D space movement. The game plays like a dogfight with more control of various parts of the ship. With that ship destroyed in the combat simulator, the next section on Starfleet Headquarters map menu is the cafeteria, where you can talk and interact with other fellow cadets and learn more about them and about Starfleet. You also have your dorm room where you can look at data and facts from Star Trek lore, such as ship types, info about alien races, people in the game, and their governments. It's nice to see many Star Trek aliens represented here, from the Vulcans and Romulans to the Klingons and even the Gorn. This area of the game is mainly for learning about Star Trek lore, but it's also nice to check out and read. You can also get your password here for continuing your progress. There is no save data. The last section of the Starfleet Headquarters map menu is the Mission Select. You have the basic training to replay as well, but there's also a few missions based on classic Star Trek encounters and battle scenarios, including one from the movie Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. Aside from the three scenarios and one training, there are two other main modes. On the Wrath of Khan mission, it is not only combat against Khan and his crew, but it's a recreation of events from the movie, so you're essentially replaying an in-ship portion of the important scene from that movie, as Captain James T. Kirk, along with his crew, you must battle the scenario against the villainous Khan. Khan! 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 And this mission is so tough that I recommend training or setting it to a lower difficulty first, as one wave of shots from Khan's ship can bring your shields down to 50% immediately. Another game mode is where you can set up your own match with a computer-controlled ship. Here you can also choose to control a Romulan or Klingon ship. These ships are very different visually, but it's similar in gameplay and control. Surprisingly, this game does feature a two-player versus mode, so you can play with your little buddies, and it's pretty amazing. You got a split-screen dogfight versus between you and a friend with a ship of your choosing. The Super FX ship can pull off some amazing 3D graphics, and it can do it twice on split-screen. And on all game modes that allow you to pick your ship, there are a variety of ships for Romulans, Klingons, and the Federation. Trekkies and followers of the series will be familiar with the specific ship model types. It's nice to see different interiors of the Klingon ships, those are ones that I always like seeing inside. Star Trek Starfleet Academy on the Super Nintendo delivers fun Star Trek ship combat gameplay, and delivers exactly what it says, a Starship Bridge Simulator. It may or may not be the deepest tactically Star Trek game out there, but if you only have a Super Nintendo to play on, it's fairly deep for the console, with nice 3D Super FX graphics, a detailed amount of information, and good control over your Starship. Out of all three Star Trek games that I have on the Super Nintendo, this is the one that's actually the easiest to pick up and play, and the easiest for beginners to start out on. I would definitely recommend this as the highest one out of the three to any Star Trek fan or Super Nintendo fan. If you want more tactics from a game like Star Fox on your Super Nintendo, or a game with just fun space dogfights, or maybe just a fun Star Trek game, this is for you. Alright everybody, thanks for watching today's Happy Beard Games reviews. We checked out the game Star Trek Starfleet Academy for the Super Nintendo. Stay tuned for more Star Trek The SNES Generation videos on Happy Beard Games as my next two reviews will be Star Trek The Next Generation and Star Trek Deep Space Nine, both for the Super Nintendo. And in the near future I will have a review of the game Star Trek Voyager for the PlayStation 2. Alright everyone, thanks for watching once again, please be sure to give this video a like, subscribe, Leave a comment, let me know what you think, and share this video with your friends. Alright everyone, I can't do the live long and prosper with the power glove. Live long and prosper everybody.